It's the final game on the Bulls' preseason schedule and just the third basketball game ever to be played at the new United Center in Chicago. Tonight, the Bulls and the Washington Bullets. And good evening, everyone. I'm Steve Cashel. Welcome to our pregame show and Chicago Bulls basketball here on Sports Channel. Norm Van Leer is also with us tonight. We'll get at Norm's thoughts on a variety of issues in just a little bit. Well, after losing four of their first five exhibitions, the Chicago Bulls have turned around and have won the last two. They're still carrying a big roster, but we expect to see more of a regular season type game, being now uh, that this is the last preseason contest for both teams. Now, to get things started, we're going to go to the uh, game site, the new United Center. Welcome in our play-by-play -play team. Sounds kind of loud. Here's Tom Dore, Johnny Red Kerr. How's it going, guys? I don't know, Johnny. Do you think Phil will play this any differently? I mean, it, it's, it is the last game, obviously. Yeah, well, the last uh, preseason game, the last time he'll get to see his uh, charges uh, really in a, a game with, with the officials and the fans and a building and everything else. I think he'll go uh, not all out to win this, but I think you'll see your, his veterans and the team he's formulating will get the majority of minutes tonight. Yes. You know what, John? I think there's still some questions among the coaching staff as to who's going to make this ball club. This is really the last game chance to see who's going to play on this team this well, year. Well, somebody will probably get a spot if Luke Longley doesn't open the season. If he's on the injured list, uh, that would open one more spot on this club, at least for five games. So uh, they're going to get a chance to show their worst tonight. They better do a good job. Yeah, this is the last game, obviously, here at the United Center before we get opening night next week and the last chance for them to impress the coaching staff. All right, let's go back to the studio. Once again, here's Steve Cashel. All right, Tom and Johnny, thanks a lot. Well, with us again, as he will be for each and every Bulls game here on Sports Channel this season, is our very own Norm Van Leer. And, uh, Norm, welcome again. Uh, how you doing, buddy? Now we get to show our set right here. What do you think of this thing, huh? <laughs> a little Halloween spirit. Got this you know, thing lighting up. Yeah, all that stuff. You know, we're ready to rock and roll, man. We'll be like this next Friday, though, for the regular season. We'll be oh, live man. from the stadium next Friday. Norm, Phil Jackson said it last Monday. Time to get used to winning, and the Bulls have fared pretty well, especially in the last two games. Do you think they're doing the necessary things to prepare for the regular season? I mean, this is it. Preseason ends tonight. Well, I mean, they're doing as best to what they have to offer right now to get ready for the season. You start, you have a couple of veterans. You've been playing a little bit, mixing with some of the young kids, and now you got to put a little chemistry together and try to get it going and see who's going to do what. And uh, then you got some people you got to cut, Steve. So, you know, you got to make some decisions. So now's the time to play them. And I think they picked it up, the tempo up a little bit as far as our spirit and, and going at, uh, you know, this uh, game this season. So we'll see what happens uh, tonight. I think you got to play a lot of guys uh, some more minutes, game conditions, and also at the same time you got to throw some young kids in there to see who you're going to keep yeah. and, and things of that nature. So Looks like one spot is open. We're going to get into right. that a little bit later. Bulls have had a busy couple of days. Yesterday they practiced in the morning at the Berto Center in Deerfield, then took an afternoon flight to Greensboro, North Carolina, where they last night they played the Sacramento Kings. The game was very close in the early going. Bulls and White. Uh, trailed by a couple here when Scotty Pippen nails the 14-foot jumper. Scotty had 14 for the game. Bulls in the fast break for Phil Jackson. Watch this. This is the way to run. Scotty's going to track it down. Go back to JoJo English playing his first game of the preseason after coming back from that hamstring injury. Bulls led by one. Then in the third quarter, they really opened it up. Ron Harper with a three. Only his third three-pointer in 15 attempts this season. Bulls win by a final of 112 to 101. Bulls win it by 11. Number one draft pick Dickie Simpkins winds up leading the Bulls with 15 points and six rebounds. Norm, this kid is yet to start, but he's leading the team in field goal percentage through seven preseason games and has now gone to the free throw line more times than anybody else. Do you like Dickie Simpkins? Is he our starter possibly a power forward? It could very well be, but if he doesn't start, uh, he'll play a lot. You know, starting at times uh, doesn't mean a lot in this league. But it's the minute you play, and I think he'll play a lot. I think he's a surprise. I think Jerry Krause has uh, gone out and pulled one out of his hat here that uh, a lot of people didn't know about and hear about, at least toward the end of the season at Providence in the Big East Tournament, he came about. And certainly, I think he's a surprise of this team right now. And I also like the kid Franklin. Tony, you know, uh, or, uh, yeah, Kevin Franklin. Yes, indeed. Yeah. I, I like the two, the way they approach things. And the Bulls need someone like Simpkin to step up and uh, provide. You know, Horace is gone. He's got a heck of an opportunity. I think he can do it. I, I, I may be a little suspect on his defense and his quickness, but, man, his, his power and his scoring is uh, right there. And I, I like what I see so far anyway. How about Ron Harper? We showed that highlight, him hitting a three, only mm -hmm. three of 15 in the three-point land for the preseason. <laughs> I don't know if he's a three-point shooter, maybe not, but he's really having problems mm -hmm. learning that triangle offense. How long do you think until he gets comfortable? Well, my opinion about the triangle offense, I think Ron Harper needs the ball at 
and that's the problem playing without the basketball as I see it. I think he'll adjust to that as the season goes. But I, I said this before, with Ron Harper, Kukic, and then also Scotty Pippen, it's going to be very interesting to see how they play that triangle without the ball. It's the most important thing in basketball is playing without the ball. Ron Harper needs the basketball, and I think he's lost without the ball right now. Okay, well, we have a ways to go here on our Bulls pregame show. We're jam-packed with material still to come on tonight's pregame show. Johnny Red sits down with the coach, Phil Jackson. Later, we'll look at this year's rookie crop, including Glenn Robinson. Will he ever sign? But up next, Norm will tell us uh, who should make this year's roster for the Bulls. They still have at least one spot left. Pre-game show is brought to you by... Welcome back to the pregame show. It appears the Bulls only have one roster spot left, which means about six guys are battling to stay alive. We're going to focus on three who we think have the best chance. The first is JoJo English, a third-year pro who has been on and off the Bulls roster, really, for the past three years. Now, so far this season, JoJo missed the first six preseason games due to a hamstring injury. Norm, what do you think of JoJo English? I think he has a lot of talent. And one thing, they put him on the roster last year in the playoffs, so they feel something that's... Uh needed there with this basketball team. I like the way he plays. He just needs playing time to express himself. He doesn't have a bad shot. He has a tremendous spring. He can go to the basket. He's not afraid to go in there. And as you see right here, uh, Scotty catches up. He can get up in the air and slam dunk. I, you know, he doesn't look as if he's moving enthused to, to play the game, but I like him as a ball player. But I, I, you got to see more playing time to see what he's really about. And I think the Bulls owe that to him if they indeed keep him on the team. Last night in his first preseason game against Sacramento, he came away with five points in 11 minutes. Uh, now, one player who has turned more heads than one, including Norm Van Leers, is little number 12, Kevin Franklin, 6'4 guard from Oklahoma City, which plays in the NAIA. Now, this is the guy you like. In the last game, Norm, we had him. You called him Little Wilbur Holland. Yeah, that's what he was, <laughs> but he has, I think, a little more instinctive uh, playmaking skills than Wilbur. He hit the long jumper there, but he gets back. He's quick. He's not afraid to take it, even though that uh, three-point uh, shot is in a little bit. I like his style. I like his defense. I like his hustle. Here he keeps going. He comes back. He still, watch this, a good, fundamentally sound bounce pass. Yeah. I love to see that in young guys did all this hot dogging stuff. That's what it's all about, and that's why I like this kid. And he's impressed me quite a bit with his downtown threat. And plus, he's left-handed. He looks good shooting that jump shot. And uh, plus, he's one of the few guys remaining with bald heads now. Everybody's grown their hair back <laughs> But I like this kid. In my opinion, I think he can make this team. I think he has a good shot at making it. If not, it would be a shame to let this spark what the, this team needs uh, to let go. This youngster is a two-time first-team NAIA Division I All-America who set records at Oklahoma City for three-point field goal percentage and career free throw percentage. Now look at a local guy. Local because he played college ball at Northwestern. Kevin Rankin is an undrafted free agent who has hit 54% of his shots for the Bulls in the preseason, although his best attribute is rebounding. Norman, does he have a chance? Uh, it, it's going to be a tough one, Steve. You're already loaded up in the middle. Maybe he might be able to hang on a roster if Luke Longley doesn't stay around about. I don't know if that's uh, going to be a nice uh, piece for the puzzle for him to stay locally, play to Northwestern, become uh, and play for the Bulls. I don't see it, but at the same time, I think he has a career. He can go elsewhere. He is seven foot. Uh, Ball player, he can get up and down the court. He is a strong rebounder, and you know you need uh, those type of people around. And uh, he'll have a career somewhere. He may have to go to Europe. He may uh, go to CBA. I don't know. But uh, I can't see. A, there's a slight chance maybe he might make it, but I can't see it, Steve. Well, three other players Bulls are carrying are guard Kenny Harris, a rookie from Virginia Commonwealth, Judd Bushler, a fifth-year pro from Arizona, and Greg Foster, another fifth-year man from Texel Paso. Any guys you like there? Well, they're all there. Uh, you know, they're out hustling and, and doing what they have. Butcher is not bad ball mm -hmm. player, but uh, experience. He, he, you know, he's been there. That's yeah. what I'm saying. But the rest, uh, hey, it's caught up in the number game. That's what it's all about in professional sports anyway. And uh, you get the opportunity, hopefully you make it. But these guys are in the number game. Maybe someone else may pick them up. Synopsis, you like Kevin Franklin. I like Kevin Franklin first right off the bat. He's, he's the one I like right now. But at the same time, JoJo English is a good ball player. I like him. They need to play him more. And I think not being in camp but by being injured has hurt his chance to see what he really is about this year. Okay, time to go back to the United Center. And speaking of new faces, Tom Doerr has one who is brand new with the Bulls organization. But, you know, not new to the area. Tom? 
Well, thanks, Steve Cashel, back here at the United Center, and a longtime NBA coach and a guy who comes from this area. Jimmy Rogers is alongside. Well, first of all, glad to have you with the Chicago Bulls, and uh, it's also good to have another East Leiden Eagle here, i got to tell you that. Yeah, thank you, Tom. You know, uh, we go back a long ways. Of course, East Leiden, uh, high school, Franklin Park. It's great to be here. I'm very excited about it. Life works in strange ways sometimes, and coming back to this area, especially being with the Bulls, is very exciting to me and my family. Jimmy, let's talk a little bit about the difference between this organization and other ones you've been with. You've been with some of the best at some of the great times, obviously, with the Celtics and the like. But tell me about where you see this team right now and the, and the organization as a whole. Well, I think uh, the reputation that the Bulls have had and the success they've had uh, led me to believe that this was a great place to be because I, I was with some championship teams over in Boston, a quality organization, and I've always looked at... Uh, the Bulls is that type of an organization, Tom. Uh, you know, they do things the right way. They're very explicit, very detailed, uh, have excellent uh, front office people, uh, great coaching staff. And uh, I'm just, like I said, I'm very excited about being back in a situation where we definitely have a chance to be a very, very good basketball team. Yeah, that's fun, obviously. The things yep. that you're talking about is how much fun it is to be back home, I think. And I think it's the same thing with Johnny and me. But, Jimmy, now, let's talk about this team for a minute now. This is an interesting time for the Chicago Bulls as a ball club, not only with cuts coming up, but with a team right now that's looking to try and, again, make a run at a championship. Yeah, this, this has been a very uh, interesting training camp and a very important one for, for our franchise because there have been so many changes. Uh, the training camp has been a good one, Tom. I think the guys have worked very hard. Uh, we still have 17 players on our roster, which is probably more than maybe many teams have at this stage of a training camp. But it's been very difficult. Uh, and I think a successful training camp is one where your choices, uh, the choices that have to be made are difficult ones. That means that you have some talent and uh, people are buying for spots. And uh, that has made it a very interesting camp. Well, for all of us at Sports Channel, i got to tell you, we're just tickled pink that you're back here in Chicago and with the Bulls. We look forward to a long time you being here, Jimmy. Thank you, Tom. I'm looking forward to it. All right, that's Jimmy Rogers. Now let's go back to the studio. Once again, here's Steve Cashel. Thank you, Tom. Eleven teams put a wrap-up on their preseason tonight, including the Bulls and Bullets. Here's a preview of three other games going on tonight in our NBA Fast Break segment. The Portland Trailblazers wrap up their 94 preseason tonight before heading to Japan to open the 94-95 regular season against the Clippers on Friday. P.J. Carlissimo is the third consecutive Blazers coach to take the job with no previous NBA head coaching experience. Carlissimo's job won't be easy as he has to deal with aging veterans around the downslope of their careers. One of those veterans is Terry Porter. Porter is out six to eight weeks after having ankle surgery earlier this week. Holdout Cliff Robinson did rejoin the team on Tuesday, but no new agreement has been reached on his contract. In Oakland, it seems to be the same old story for the Golden State Warriors. Chris Mullen will be sidelined for six to eight weeks with a knee injury, and Billy Owens will be sidelined for two weeks as he nurses a hamstring injury. In the first four preseason games for the Cleveland Cavaliers, Mark Price and Terrell Brandon led the squad in scoring with a combined 140 points in 149 minutes. But Terrell Brandon has missed the last three games with a foot injury. Brandon joins a list of several injured Cavs. In Utah, John Stockton enters the upcoming season just 538 assists behind Magic Johnson as the NBA all-time leader in assists. If Stockton can keep his average of 11 assists a game from last season, Stockton should break the record by February. The Battle of Florida takes place in Louisiana as the Magic take on the Heat at the Superdome. Miami leads the regular season series 12 games to 8, but Miami won a franchise record 42 games last season. Much of the success of the Heat has come from the hot hand of Glenn Rice, but Shaq has dominated this preseason, averaging nearly 35 points a game to go along with 10 rebounds which has NBA fans in Orlando asking, is Orlando big enough for two Magic Kingdoms? You can Bulls and Bullets are getting set to tip it off at the United Center as we wind down the preseason for 1994. Here's Johnny Red Kerr with the head coach, Bill Jackson. So 
coach, you've uh, coached against Jimmy Lyon and before. Do you expect them to be any different now with this Washington ball club? You know, Johnny, Jimmy Lynham was uh, reared kind of on Jack Ramsey's coaching philosophy. Same college, worked underneath him. He's been in the pros now, doing very good things in the NBA. They're going to post you. They're going to run against you. They're going to be free-flowing. They have high screen rolls, sideline screen rolls. And they'll be an energetic team, probably more offensively minded than the Bullets have been in years. I just look at it, but we may see you smile a little more this year. Good luck, Coach. Thanks, John. The show about the show. A preview of the NBA's upcoming season. Put it up. Look out. He got it. Oh, no, Players, it, uh, owners, decided, announcers, and coaches from across the nation come together for one night to take on the issues. It's a Sports Channel Regional Network special with Mike Gorman and Tom Dore. Live from Boston, tip-off 94, Thursday night at 7, right here on Sports Channel. Koviak. The W sounds like a B. It really doesn't matter, though, because people aren't going to get it right anyway. By the way, that was the first question I asked Larry when I met him this fall. One more time, Chris Koviak. You don't pronounce the T, and like Larry said, the W is pronounced like a V. Let's hear it, Norm. Chris Koviak. Good. All well, right. I call him K. <laughs> it's easy that way, Simple right? Simple that. <laughs> oh, he's a new breed to the Bulls. You know, it's a new breed in the NBA. Players like Magic, Bird, and Jordan are being replaced by names like Shaq, Hardaway, and Ewing. And then there are the rookies, which are a very talented bunch, and showing their wares, at least... Those of you who are uh, playing, remember the big dog, Glenn Robinson, the number one pick in the draft by Milwaukee, is still holding out. He has made his demand, Norm. He wants a $100 million contract. Is he way out of control? Well, I don't know if he's out of control. If you give uh, Chris Weber $85 million, what did the, uh, the public expect the, the next rookie to be drafted first round to, to go for? Yes, I bet he's got the big dog blues right now. So he's not getting the, the $100 million. And you know what? They'll settle somewhere in the middle and 75 million, whatever. But uh, he's every bit uh, talented enough to go up there and help Milwaukee turn around a little bit, at least uh, right now. But I don't know. I, I, I applaud Milwaukee for standing pat because uh, somewhere along the line we got to make sense of this whole game. So, uh, But he's, he's definitely talented, and you know he can come and play. And, you know, he's a good person. And uh, let this whole thing uh, get out of whack about what he's about because there's 100 million. This is a good kid, and he loves to play. Don't forget, these are agents the one talking about these particular things. All right, well, one player who did agree to terms that is already being touted as the next Michael Jordan, how dare they, is <laughs> Grant Hill from Duke. How about this? Hill, a member of the Detroit Pistons. Could he be the next coming of Michael Jordan? Well, no one's ever going to be Michael Jordan, but I tell you what, this guy can play basketball. Of all the draft people that have come out of the draft, he's the best. He's the best all-around basketball player in the draft, and he'll show you far no injuries. This guy can play some basketball. He can go out, and, and his approach is there. Uh, his upbringing is great. The school that we went to is great. This guy is the real deal. Michael, hey, there's no other person in the world but Michael. Two other guys who you have to look out for as far as rookies are concerned. Jason Kidd, the number two pick in the June draft, and also uh, Danielle Marshall, who we saw with the T-Wolves in our last Bulls game. What do you think of those two? I like Danielle Marshall. He's, uh, he's a solid ball player. He comes to play, and he's tough. Uh, he can shoot the basketball very well. And he had a little uh, problem, I guess, in the finals or in the NCAA regionals. And uh, don't let that bother you. He's a good ball player. I say Jason Kidd, you talk about a perfect fit for the system of what NBA basketball is about right now as a point guard. No zones, sag back. Because, see, I'd make this guy shoot a jump shot, which I think he doesn't have one. But mm -hmm. with today's league, wide open, you're not allowed to play zone. He's going to penetrate and do things that point guards are going to get away with. And he'll do it well. He's good at that. But I wish to prove him to shoot a jump shot to make him in the class I like to put him in. All right, Bulls pregame show continues with more coming up soon. Bullets and the Bulls. As a look again, stretching out. We'll be back with more right after this. Sports Channel's coverage of Chicago Bulls basketball is brought to you in part by United. The airline that's uniting the world is proud to be Chicago's hometown airline. Come fly our friendly skies by your local Chevy Geo dealers. Good people to know when you're looking for a car. By Mick Golden, smooth over everything. And by the Discover Card, it pays to discover. 
Don't forget, immediately following the game, we will bring you the Sports Channel report included in our one-hour show this evening, live post-game reaction from head coach Bill Jackson.